Last week was hurry up and wait. This week we're going into the wind. We're going to tackle the story of the Red Sea crossing. And many of you may have heard this story before, but we're going to approach it from a fresh angle this week as we hear about how God rescued the Israelites with the wind of his breath by carving a path through the sea so they could walk through on dry ground. Welcome to worship. My name is Joe Varner, and I get to be the pastor of Thalia United Methodist Church. Thank you for being a part of our family of faith this week as we worship and glorify God. Good morning. My name is Christy Lorkowitz, and I'll be serving as your liturgist today. Let us join our hearts together in our centering prayer. O oh Lord, majestic in holiness, who is like you? In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. O oh Lord, awesome in splendor, who is like you? Your right hand, O oh Lord, glorious in power, shattered the enemy. O oh Lord, worker of wonders, who is like you? Sing to the Lord, my strength and my might. You are my salvation. Amen. Letting go of every single dream, I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you see. I'm tired to win this war, I confess. My As we prepare to hear God's word, 
let us ask for inspiration from the Holy Spirit. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Hear now the word of the Lord from Exodus 14, verses 19 through 31. God's messenger, who had been in front of Israel's camp, moved and went behind them. The column of cloud moved from the front and took its place behind them. It stood between Egypt's camp and Israel's camp. The cloud remained there, and when darkness fell, it lit up the night. They didn't come near each other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord pushed the sea back by a strong east wind all night, turning the sea into dry land. The waters were split into two. The Israelites walked into the sea on dry ground. The waters formed a wall for them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians chased them and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and cavalry. As morning approached, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian camp from the column of lightning and cloud and threw the Egyptian camp into a panic. The Lord jammed their chariot wheels so they wouldn't turn easily. The Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites because the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water comes back and covers the Egyptians, their chariots, and their cavalry. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. At daybreak, the sea returned to its normal depth. The Egyptians were driving toward it, and the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the cavalry, Pharaoh's entire army that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. The Israelites, however, walked on dry ground through the sea. The waters formed a wall for them on the right hand and on their left. The Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians that day. Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the amazing power of the Lord against the Egyptians. The people were in awe of the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Join your hearts with me now as we go to God in prayer. Almighty God, glorious and victorious, we come before you now as your humbled people giving thanks for all you are and all you have done. We pray for a fresh pouring out of your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit wind would carve a path through the sea, so that your people can walk on dry ground. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The Red Sea crossing. You heard about this in our reading this week, but we're going to talk about some different parts of the story that you may not have ever seen before. So let me help set up the scene for our memory today, our collective reflecting on this story. For some of you, this may be the first time that you've heard about how God split the sea with his breath and how the people walked boldly through dry ground. Let's get ourselves into the story a little bit. We've already heard about the Passover when God passed over the Hebrew people. You remember the sacrifice of the lamb and they put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. And then finally, this was the act that enabled the Pharaoh to let the Israelites go, except after the Israelites, this great multitude of people who had been enslaved for 400 years, had made their way out of Egypt. Then Pharaoh thinks to himself, wow, I just lost my workforce. And so he goes after the Israelites with a group of about 600 chariots. Can you imagine being an Israelite and hearing the thundering of 600 chariots coming after you? So even though God had set them free from Egypt and led them out boldly in the procession, now Pharaoh's coming back to get them. 
and God has led them to the edge of this sea. And that's why I love this altar design that we have for us as a part of this worship series. Because over here, this blue section of our altar is a sign of the Red Sea. This was the final barrier between the Israelites and their freedom. See, even though they had been set free at the Passover, they weren't entirely free because their enemies were coming after them. It's this moment where the Israelites get separated from Egypt once and for all. And so as the Israelites come to the edge of those waters and they hear the thundering of those chariots, they begin to panic and Moses speaks to their fear. He says that Egyptians who are after you today, you will see no more. Never again will they taunt us or terrorize us or haunt us. You need only to be still. Wow, what a message. And then God tells Moses he got it wrong. Moses had just encouraged the people to be still because the Lord is going to fight for them. And God says to Moses, you better tell the Israelites to keep going because I'm about to separate them from you forever. God is going to do the miraculous once again. See, Moses had thought that all they needed to do was to sit on the edge of the water and watch God strike down the Egyptians once and for all. But God had a different plan. God told Moses to stretch out his hand over the water. And you remember, in the story of the burning bush, God invited Moses to look into his hands when he was feeling doubt about his ability to lead God's people. And there in his hand was that same shepherd's staff that he had used for 40 years to shepherd the flock of his father-in-law. Now he's shepherding the flock of God the Father in heaven. And God tells him to stretch out his hand. And so Moses stretches the staff over the sea and God, with a fierce wind all night long, carves a path through the sea. Now, when we usually think about this story, we think it's an instant and God breathes into the sea and the wall of water just begins to build on the right, on the left. But it says that God drove back the waters all night long. Now, think about what kind of force would need to drive a wall through the water. This is the part I want us to reflect on right now. It was probably terrifying for the Israelites. You got Egypt on one hand, and you have hurricane force winds on the other coming from the mouth of God to separate the waters so that you can walk through on dry ground. The Israelites must have been terrified. What kind of moment are they stuck in? And just like us, they are wondering, do we stay put and just wait for the elements to succumb us, to wait for our enemies to wipe us out? Or do we embrace the fear of following God to a new future? That's the moment our church is in right now. That's the moment our community and our society is in right now. God is making a way where we can't see one. And we have to follow God courageously as God breathes through our circumstances and carves a path through the sea. You know, just recently, Hurricane Laura tore through Louisiana and Texas and left a wake of destruction all across the continental United States. There were tornadoes all the way up in New England because of this storm. So from Louisiana all the way up to Connecticut, the effects of that storm were felt. Now, by the time it hit land, it was a very strong category for hurricane with winds of 150 miles an hour. There were storm surges of 10 feet, and it was the equivalent of a 40-mile-wide tornado. Now, think about that. Think about being stuck on the edge of the sea with that kind of force. Now, imagine yourself with the Israelites on the edge of the sea. And you've got the roaring of chariots on one side and then the roaring of the mighty wind from God on the other, driving back the sea to make a way for God's people. It's a terrifying moment either way they go. If they stay put and allow themselves to be enslaved by Egypt once again or if they follow God courageously into the wind as God makes a way for His people. Right now, we probably feel overwhelmed 
by the things that are separating us from the, those things about life that we've grown to love so much. Some of you have probably been in mourning because the football season is just not going to be the same. Some of us may feel the effects of depression from the isolation that we've been in. And here, we are following the Israelites who had been enslaved for 400 years. As they walk on dry ground into the wind that had the power to carve a path through the sea. You see, sometimes following God is not all rainbows and butterflies. Sometimes it means that we follow a God who carves a path through the sea with the power of His breath. That's the kind of God that we serve. God is inviting our church to follow the same God who led the Israelites out of slavery, who is leading us now into new ways of doing church. I know that it's uncomfortable, but think about how uncomfortable it may have been to follow those hurricane force winds through that path that God had carved through the sea. Think about how terrifying it must have been to walk in the middle of the ocean on dry ground with a wall of water on the right and a wall of water on the left. But then think about how powerful it must have been after they had made their way through the sea, after they followed God, and then God swallowed up the entire Egyptian army so that they knew that Egypt would terrorize them no more. Maybe you are following God through a new path this week, and maybe God is setting you free from that which has oppressed you all of your life. Maybe it's fear or disappointment or resentment or addiction. God is leading us through a new path right now, personally in our walks with Christ and corporately in our life as a church. We have only to follow the wind as God leads us to a good and beautiful future. May you go boldly into the wind this week, embracing the fear that can accompany our walk with God because on the other side is a good and beautiful future. Amen. We come now to a very important time in our worship. This is when we give thanks for all that God is, for all who God is, and all that God has done for us. You know, aside from any good thing that God has done, we should give thanks for who God is. God is worthy of our praise. A sign of our praise is our offering. So I want to encourage you right now to go online or to pray in your heart how you're going to offer yourself and your gifts to God as a sign of your worship. Let's worship God now with our offering. Your faithfulness 
what you are famous for. Show the mouth of lions, bring dry bones to life, and do what you are famous for. What you are famous for, God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think, Lord. You crippled by fear right now. You might feel like the Israelites stuck on the seashore, hearing the sound of your enemy coming after you. But as God blows a path through the sea today, may you follow the Lord with boldness, with courage, with strength, and with peace as you go to love and serve the Lord in all that you do. Now may the love of God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.